All right, dark gray Jedi. This is kind of mm-hmm. a, might be a good show for you. If you're a dark gray Jedi. <laughs> Speaking uh, of dark Jedi, yeah. Just so you know, we will uh, will the first part of it for everybody, but not just for you, but just for you, just for you, dark gray. Uh, the first part will be spoiler free, and then I will alert you with a magical illusion of whenever it is time for the spoiler part. So yeah. don't worry about it if you're worried about spoilers. First part will not be spoilers. So, we are here to do what tonight, Canadian? Kick off the reviewing of Ahsoka. The first uh, first week is the first two episodes. Wait, Ahsoka? Yeah. I thought I thought we were doing the Christmas special. I totally watched the wrong show, dude. No, we do, we're, doing, we're doing Rebels Season 5. Or season <laughs> 6, whichever, whichever this would technically be. <laughs> um, all right. So, what I will say about it, I'll go first. Uh, overall, good show. Don't have any issues with it, um, as uh, normally do. I mean, there's, there's always Star Wars. There's always a way to be that fan and nitpick this, that, and the other. But I, I probably only have like one or two, honestly. Yeah, uh, I think I have uh, two nitpicks myself as well. Uh, quickly, what I will say is uh, if you're a fan, like I am, of Rebels, because it was what me and my son watched. I said it several times. You're just getting... The next season of Rebels is what you get. <laughs> You're getting the next season of Rebels, the sequel, uh, the sequel series everyone mentioned. Yeah. Um, and so I will say, <clears throat> if you want to watch it and you watch the first episode and you already feel like you're missing something, you I are. hate to say because it's a big commitment. You might have to either go watch a YouTube show that reviews it, like the sums it all up. Because I'm sure there's summaries out there that sums yeah. the entire thing up, or go watch Rebels. I was just watching it. I think they're really good. Um, because Rebels goes in a lot of really deep places that people don't get a credit for because they were kind of hatey about it when it came out. Um, yeah. including, the childishness at the beginning. Yeah, including like, I would, I mean, I guess I guess he said it wasn't technically time travel. It was time travel. Even though he says it's not time travel, it was time travel. Um, and all kinds of things. So I would say, I know they say you don't have to watch Rebels to get it, but man. I, it's, hel- it's helpful. It's, it's, oof. It would be very necessary, and also for all the uh, the flyby haters who say um, I will hydrate, even though I can't see that because this doesn't let me. But how are you doing, Carly? This says uh, <laughs> Star Wars fans hate ladies. That's now I feel like the third show in a row. Uh, well, Andor being this one for sure, and this one where there's just badass ladies everywhere, and it seems like everyone's loving it. So uh, we'll we'll put that right there that we can hate a person. Or hate a character because we don't like, and it doesn't mean how they're written or how the character is. <laughs> Just want to have basically some of the best uh, female characters they can do. Yeah, this is pretty awesome. Uh, that's all I have to say because I think anything other than that would be spoilery. Yeah. Um, um, so, what did you think about it? Unspoilerily. Unspoilery. Ahsoka dies immediately, and all flashback. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Uh, I I enjoyed it. I I was super happy with how they turned out. I was happy with the run times being like true almost hours, opposed to really short episodes at first. Um, I enjoyed the cast. Everyone did a great job. Uh, mm-hmm. And then action was good. Music was great. I loved the music in this. The intro music and the uh, the theme song. Same guy who did the show did the cartoon did this. Yeah. Right? And um, on top of that. Uh, I like where it's going. I'm I'm excited to see where it, it all leads to so far. I'm loving that. I know a lot of people apparently didn't give it a chance, in my opinion. Um, oh, Jesus. The other show I just talked about. Um, Rebels. Uh, no, not Rebels. The uh, Andor. live action. Andor. Um, but I, I like kind of kind of how the, the t- it's hard to say, but it's like when you watch them, I like how they're looking like the the cinematography or whatever. Yeah, the aesthetics, the cinematography, it all is well, um, so well done. And again, I mean, the guy who who created this world, as far as Rebels goes, and this whole side branch of the Star Wars, is the guy that's the driving force behind this. So, of course, he nails 99.9. I don't even know what. 99% of the cast is nailed. I don't even know which one you would do better at. I mean, Honestly, I can't even... Th- like, yeah, it's it's fun. It's funny. I, I Like I said before, I didn't watch any of the... Sp- Boilers, also known as uh, uh, coming soon screens. I didn't watch any of them, and I was very hady on knowing they were going to just absolutely ruin this cast. And I'm wrong. 
I thought all of them were great. I mean, sometimes I get like a weird look because it's, we'll get into it. Like Hera to me looks a little more human. And there's, I think there's ways they could fix that a little bit than just some human with green mag- makeup. But I mean, casting can't, can't be wrong. Yeah. But, like I said, Rebels had a really weird cartoon style. Very, very stylized and having yeah. to translate that. It's going to be, it'd be really hard to nail that 100%. So that being the case, I think we have no choice but to go in the spoilers. I did this five seconds ago, and it's going to show. But when you see this masterpiece of editing and amazingness, <laughs> also known as just grabbed a bunch of Google stuff, uh, that's how you know the spoilers. So, Uh, All right. Amazing. You have been warned. The spoilers are now here. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter ever sees that. She gave me a spoiler alert for the spoiler alert, baby. She's, <laughs> she's going to absolutely freak when she finds out I put that on there. That was like our first attempt to ever play a song. Oh, I, 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 I realized thinking that. I was like, that must be one of your kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, right off the bat. Something mm-hmm. happened, something weird. Daddy Lucas is probably throwing drinks at the TV, even though I know he's involved in this. But we don't have the yellow Star Wars crawl. It's not even on the gangster lean. I well, as soon as the crawl came good. up and that music kicked in, it was the red crawl. I got excited. It, it looked so cool to me. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god. Uh yeah. We but, have um, a red crawl that's not on a gangster lead. It is straight up just red. Why do you think they went with the red? Air to the Empire. Dark times. Dark, dark times, times are coming. Um, the um that intro though. God. If I had to take anything away from the so far from these two episodes, is I absolutely love the villains and the cat that's in the frame. That's part of it. That's all part of the experience. If, if you have a cat, you're gonna get a cat time. So um, the um yeah, the villains are easily like they're stealing the show for me. Balin and Shin, his apprentice, look fantastic. Their character design is amazing, they sound great, they're interesting. There's they they have they have depth to them that I'm like I'm I'm looking for more of like seeing Balin like he's a dark seems like a dark Jedi but like he has says later on like when he's told that Ahsoka is the one he has to like, basically you go kill Ahsoka he's like it's a shame and it's like oh he's sentimental and he's like of course I'm sentimental there's only so many of us Jedi left yeah and I'm like talking about something that's, that's like four hours from now. We were on the red crawl, and you jumped for four hours. In the <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm excited about the coolest around. characters here. Oh, all right, okay, back anyway. to open. <laughs> so you get the you get the opening ship, uh, but this time we get a uh, Calamon, Macar- M- you know, Calamari Calamari ship. ship. Uh, I, which I think looked amazing. I thought that was yeah. super cool. I thought that was a really cool looking ship. Um, and we see that the, it is filled with New Republic people. Mm-hmm. Um, here's my gripe but then goes into I think this I think they're doing a better job here and here's my gripe one you're carrying a very important prisoner on a ship and a random I had to look it up ETA at a class which is like a Jedi ship flies up to you and says we're a bunch of Jedi and when you know damn good well they ain't no Jedi and they say I want to get on the ship and the guy's like yeah you know what let them on Let's see what happens. Um, that has to be some sort of extremely break from protocol because what do you mean you let somebody on a ship? He was a hundred percent bored, as you can tell, and he was like, you know what? Let's have a little bit of excitement. Let's let's this bring is like you the to of somebody ran up and gave either a dynamite stick or the file in the cake to the prison. It was like, hey, give him my cake. There's a file in it. it. I thought that was a little bit weird, but here's where that complaint goes to. I think they're doing a better job here because I feel like it's just overall you have to realize now that the New Republic is filled with ideologues. They're filled with people who think the world should be a better place. Peace and love, man. Peace, if you will. And they think that we can make everyone to see how good we treat people, even though we murdered like, you know, thousands of people in all these starships. 
Uh, and w- w- if we just show them how good we are, they'll change their ways. And they're full of that. And I think they're doing a better job of him saying, hey, we're the only power out here. Let's just see who they are. They're probably some bumbling imperial idiot. And it's more of a confidence and kind of an incompetence, obviously. Cockiness over yes. But when they've done this in the past, which, which I've had an issue with it, it's because they did it like in a bumbling dummy way where it's like, we don't know what we're doing. Like, it just seemed like it was forced. This seems more like this guy's a little overconfident. He's going to try to make an example of somebody. Oops. That's not who you thought it was when they, when they come down the thing. So yeah. that was going to be a complaint. But then the more I thought about it, the more I was like, they're actually doing a pretty good job of, uh, of, I guess. Establishing a new Republic as these. Yeah. Um, so that's when we get our first shot <laughs> here. They always think is awesome about star Wars, but it, it doesn't make sense. Whatever they use to flush the system, whatever releases all that nice white mist smoke, whatever that is, I don't know what design would pass some kind of, you know, uh, safety check that it always <laughs> exhausts right into the ramp where people are exiting. You would think it would it would exhaust <laughs> away from people, but man, does it look cool! But <laughs> every time yeah. I see that kind of giggle, because like whatever that is, it shouldn't be exhausting on the ramp. No. That's the land. <laughs> You got the effect. Some guy with a wrench probably sm- after the inspection just smacked the the exhaust pipe to aim inwards. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, we get them. We get them doing the old uh, hallway scene here, the new new hallway yeah. scene. Very but good. They, you get the full the classic two Jedi's. You can go back and tell all of them from Kenobi and Anakin did it a bunch of times before that. You get the Jedi, and we find out later Padawan just walking up to people. Cool. One thing I would say that before we get to the jet, before we get to the hallway scene, was you get the first glimpse that these aren't, in my opinion, murdering for the sake of murdering Sith. Yeah, no, because they could have easily killed everyone. Yeah, he, he talks to him and is like, hey, just you know, get out of the way and let us see her. We need to talk to her. And they wouldn't. So, okay, well, now you're in my way. So now you, well, you have to be, you have to be gone. But like he didn't like he didn't just come out of the ship murdering everybody. He was kind of like, just let me go by and talk to her. But then now you're in my way. I got to do what I got to do. Mm-hmm. And then I'll let you talk about it because it was a he had his own little hallway scene that that was pretty cool. Yeah, I didn't it? try to overdo the hallway scene. I think they did it just right. Where I'm like, don't try to outdo the man. But what yeah, he does like his character seems like like again you talk. He doesn't seem like a bloodthirsty guy. He's just like direct. He's moving down the hallway. He's just going exactly how he needs to go he's not like going out of his way to turn around and attack the guys behind him or like he's if as they're in the process he swings and attacks them if the if he passes them he'll just deflect a shot on the way out That's most of the time he was just holding it there it was like letting them shoot him and yeah. he was just deflecting it back he wasn't being aggressively popping them back yeah no he, uh, yeah probably just a focus on like the defensive form basically yeah. um and his apprentice being like the wild like uncontrolled it was funny i thought she had before this this show premiered i thought she had two lightsabers uh and it was one her armor plates on her legs made it look like there was a second one on her um on her uh hilt um but yeah the and they go rescue morgan who um later is revealed that she is actually a night sister uh, the one thing I will say about that is um, the first time you see her braid, her Padawan braid, their lightsabers are orange. Um, obviously, oh, that's, yeah. on purpose. And the thing I was going to say was um, he uses the force to undo the door lock that usually you need R2-D2 and a droid supercomputer to bypass that. And he does it with the force. That's kind of badass. I've never seen them do that before. I don't know what that means for Ken in the future, but it was kind of cool watching him do it. Like watched him mm-hmm. bypass that lock that it takes a joy to do it. And then we get in here, her, and I guess this is going to be my first question to you. Did they, when they introduced her in Man- Mandalorian, were they always having her become a night sister? Was that always in the plans? Do you think? The funny thing is, you you look at her and she has like hints of the nice sister look to her already in the in the in the Mandalorian with the outfit colorizing and the and the braided white hair. But the thing is, it's kind of funny. We never saw a night sister in live action to compare to animation, right? This is technically the first time we've ever seen one. So like, almost similar to the idea of the first time we saw like 
Um, you see someone like uh, what's his name? Like Zeb. Like we see Zeb in live action. It's the first time I've ever seeing that species, right? Yeah. And it transitions pretty one to one. And you get other people like Cad Bane, where we've seen a species, but how he's translated, it's similar to the one in live action, but is a little different too. So, uh, well, I guess my question is because she she fought Ahsoka. Yeah. Not particularly amazingly. I don't remember there being like Uber. It seemed like she was just a good fighter. Like it didn't seem yeah. like she was like. And she didn't use any magic. Yeah, so she didn't. That's the only thing that's where she didn't use any of the magic, um, right? And, and perhaps she could make the excuse that, uh, well, she didn't want to give away who she was, but she has one one goal in life, and it's to find Thrawn and to keep Ahsoka from finding Thrawn. This would be the time if you're going to let some of that magic slip when no one's watching. This would have been the time to not get yeah. captured. <laughs> so it just seems weird. That's why I just wonder were they always? I don't mind it. I, I think it might have been a possible retcon, but at the same time, it does work in a way. Um, I'm really I'm curious not mad to about see. it. And you know that I love the Night Sisters. And again, one more badass female for all the Star <laughs> Wars people. Total who are five this. now in this in uh, this uh, show. Um, but anyway, so like I don't I don't hate it. It just seemed weird that like because she's like a totally different person. Like she's um I don't say totally different. She went from being kind of a confident mayor of a crappy Rock city dealer, so like now she's the most important person around apparently he knows though the secrets to everything it just seemed a little bit retconny to me i didn't know mm-hmm. nothing nothing egregious i just thought it was interesting yeah so clearly um, they, just, they, they make it seem like that he's uh i don't want to say simple a man of hire but it seems like he is a cell sword who yeah was paid to rescue her if need be so that's interesting i kind of like that mm-hmm um, and then, yeah, I say we transition to the next part, which is actually seeing Ahsoka. And do you want to talk about that that thing you mentioned before first? About what? About Ahsoka herself, like character wise compared to everyone else. Oh uh, no, we can talk about it later when we introduce a few more characters, probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So see here's here? My, here's the first question I have. So we see her on the planet. She's walking around, right? She's like brushing away black stuff. Is that black stuff some kind of explosive things? Because it seemed like I figured they were ashes from like Night Sisters. Because well, when those when the when the assassin droids blow up, that seems like an awful large explosion. So that was my nitpick. I was like, that explosion was ridiculously large for those two or three HK droids. And I'm like, yeah, there's unless that's probably explain why. And I could be yeah. perfectly fine. I think maybe I didn't even think, I didn't think about that being gunpowder. I thought that was like ash from like. Yeah, like I, I think it might have been some kind of explosive stuff because like the, it, that ball was encased in it, you know. So I, that's why I was wondering maybe if it was like booby trapped. If, if you did it wrong, it would blow all of it up and blow the ball up itself. I guess um, that's true. Yeah. And it would make a lot more sense because man, they had thermonuclear detonators or something. Yeah, they had they had the stuff. Oppenheimer in that one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, really quick, funny. so she figures out because at this point, for the next five minutes, we're playing a video game. Like I play, yeah, it was you were literally playing. You're doing the Zepho stuff in the first Jedi yes. Survivor. I play Jedi uh, right now, and uh, yeah, so this is totally a video game. Uh, but it's cool though. I like that she did. She does it a lot in the cartoons where she hits the lightsabers, spins them around, and then falls to the. Uh, although I felt like the fall wasn't uh, really. I feel like she would have fell a little faster. She seemed like, I guess she used the force possibly to slow down that fall because it was kind of like a... <laughs> yeah. She goes into the Indiana Jones, or like you said, the video game of Star Wars and has wall puzzles she has to figure out, figure out why something is out of order, just like you would in a video game. Well, that wall sure looks different colored. I better go investigate. And she does all this stuff and figures out a golden ball, I guess, a golden or brass ball. I don't know. What did you think about that scene? Good. I just simply, I, I thought the same thing. It was like a video game. I was laughing. I was just remembering Jedi's <laughs> fall, fall in order when you're in the Zepho t- t- temples and you have this the spheres and you're pushing them around. That's all I was thinking of. Um, <laughs> they do kind of look like the big balls you use in that. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Um, but yeah, so there's star maps and then the she leaves and then... Um, yeah, assassin droids. I couldn't stop focusing on the star maps because you know why. Uh, I play yeah. Knights of the Republic, 
You, I, I knew. Okay, so there's gonna be a line later in episode two where I was um, sitting there on the line. I sat on the edge of my seat waiting for a name drop, a yeah, specific and, name uh, drop, and they didn't. I saw the star maps. Um, they look like the star maps. Obviously, a little better technology now than they were in like 2000 or whatever. And I'm just like, okay, all right, is this is this what we're doing? Right, we already kind of introduced a little bit, just a little sneak peek from another show. And so I was like, this is what we're doing here. And the um, but then we got a deep. Easter egg with the Hu Yang droid, which is amazing because uh, I was watching it and I knew and I was like, Great, what a great companion! Hu Yang, David Tennant does a good job of reprising the role. Doctor Who, you mean? Yeah, Doctor Who, who Yang. <laughs> basically, Hu Yang. Uh, so I, I, re- I was watching the episode with the wife so she could watch it, and I'm like, I'm like, Oh, you're gonna, gonna, be, there's gonna be a character here you're gonna like who, rep- who comes back from the Clone Wars because she's a Doctor Who fan. She's like, and Huyang is just talking. I see her like, like squinting for a second, just hearing the voice. She looks at me, and I just start smiling. She's like, Is "That David Tennant." And I'm like, yep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, awesome. Uh, oh, he's fantastic, and he won. If you didn't know, he won an Emmy for best guest performance on the Clone Wars when he took that role. I did not know that. Yeah, Lady um, won. That's yes. hilarious to me. He is like basically a trainer droid for the yep. for the Jedi uh, temple. Padawans and younglings. He helped design and build their lightsabers for five hundred years. And just just overall teacher of 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 all things Jedi. What kind was, of severance was, package did he get? You think? He seems to be their co pilot. And so when uh, there was a little funny scene where she's yelling for him, and he was like, "Well, I was following Jedi protocol, and I was staying a far a safe distance away." And she was like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, we're not doing that. I need you. I need you here." <laughs> <laughs> he choose taking part a nice distance away, so yeah, he's a, he's a good character. I like that because he has that sense of uh, like like I don't, I ain't trying to die, so like he has. Yeah, that I've been around that. the block. I don't think yeah, uh, I, I, I like. The, I stay in the temple. temple. I like the temple. I like, I like <laughs> when he had that self awareness where it's like you can jump down there. I'll stay up here on the ship. I'm not going down there with you. Um, <laughs> Who you ain't better not die in this season. He better not die. Yeah. So anyway, they go back, and then we get introduced to obviously Hera. She talks to Hera, um, and I thought that was interesting because now you find out that it seems like also if you didn't know it. Yeah. So sorry, you ran into there's two things. There's the go, and you see Home One, the Rebel flagship, oh, yeah, yeah. which is awesome. Seeing that again looks great. When she docks in the hangar, you do see the ghost in the background. You see the ghost, or you see the? I didn't see the ghost. I saw the little fella. No, the ghost is in the ship. The full Wait, ghost is there. Oh, I didn't even see it. I didn't yeah. even notice it. Well, everyone um, the episode again. I double checked. Oh, sorry. So, like, when she comes out of the hole after she after she she pulls her best uh, Star Wars video game routine, she has five five, I believe, assassin droids. She she does away with them. It's no big deal. And like we said before, they drop uh, a a a, a, a nuclear, nuclear bomb. Apparently, five nuclear bombs. Hydrogen bombs for everyone. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she goes and meets Hera. Um, really cool. And I remember when I saw that, the first thing that I thought was, holy crap, you better know Rebels. That's what I wrote down, because I was like, this is so much Rebels. Well, I was wondering that, too. I was thinking, okay, this is awesome. I'm loving this. Hera's great, one of my favorites. She's great here. Uh, yeah. But also, I'm thinking the same thing. I wonder the context, if it needed. Because um, immediately, they start talking about Ezra and Thrawn. Thrawn, we know. Ezra, we don't. And like it doesn't really make sense to me to say Ezra's name, and it feels like it's supposed to have a uh, meaning, Wait. but it doesn't. If you've never seen it, you don't understand why. And here's the weird thing: so like the context for Ezra seen- for people watching the show, they do get two scenes. They get the one when the uh, the governor is talking about Commander Bridger's yeah. sacrificing his life, and then getting the hologram. That's basically the two points for um, us. But it was surprising to me that apparently. Only Ahsoka has even considered that they're alive and is looking because she was like, "What do you mean, Thrawn? Thrawn is dead. Everyone's dead." And she was like, "No, nah, they never found his body." And that fast, she was like, "Hey, so that means he's he's alive? Cool. Let's let's go." Like she didn't have any other question. She was on board right away. And I was like, "Well, you assume they were dead, and the first time somebody's like, hey, uh, he might be alive,' then suddenly it's like, oh yeah, well, uh, let's let's full go then." It's, What's um, <clears throat> I can't hear any uh, alerts because I'm on the uh, the stream yard. But thanks mm-hmm. for coming in and saying hi. So anyway, 
I think that's what I was just talking about. And then uh, obviously we have that scene. Uh, actually, that's what I said. You better know rebels because the mayor is somebody. The governor. That okay, I sat there the and I was like, that shot me more than anything. I'm sat there watching it and I hear that voice and I'm like, oh, it's cool. It's yeah, Clancy Brown. And as soon as I said, oh, that's cool. It's Clancy Brown. And I remembered he played that character in yeah. Rebels. I was like, that's amazing. That's they brought him back. That's the only reason why I even recognized him. I saw it. And I even said, oh, I like this actor. And I was like, wait, did he play? Oh, well, thank you, Lavuda. He <laughs> <watched> <laughs> hasn't watched it yet. Um, and I said, uh, I said, did he play this character? And then he forces another young man to come up talking. And him too. I had to look him up because I was like, I know this guy from somewhere, and he's a rebels character. Just the which is hilarious. Those sense. two, both of them. Filoni, Filoni's di- digging, digging. He's digging. Oh, he does crazy. deep on these ones. He get, it's, that's like a nod. He was like, I'm gonna see how many nerds freak out when they when they. You know, 100 percent that if we're getting a flashback or something of canon for whatever reason, it's gonna be Freddie Prince Jr. I, well, I don't know. You think so? I think it's just because it's gonna be a flashback or probably a quick or a, a, maybe um, a picture or something, or hologram. Anyway, both those characters, the the guy, the, the governor, and the guy he forces to talk, they are both characters from Rebels. Very small characters from Rebels. Uh, the um, governor's not a small character, I'd say. It's not that small, but he's basically just there to confirm that he knew his parents were and they were good people. That's about what he's there for. <laughs> well, and that's the help with the guy that, yeah. that, uh, a, that he met when they broke into the into the uh, imperial training thing, basically, and they both left together. And they decided it wasn't for them, and he's just randomly in there. That's 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 a deep one, Filoni. <laughs> that's so one funny, <laughs> but um. Yeah, and then we get the mural. We get the mural. We do get the mural, which is cool. Which is really cool to see. And then uh, we get to meet Sabine, who does. He skips out at the uh, at the celebration, which is very character. <laughs> and um, uh, what's it called? The yeah, first time seeing her looks great. Caught the, yeah, uh, she had a rock and rocky rock and roll kind of thing. Yeah, it's a Max Rebo best, and then that. Uh, <laughs> that was a little weird. I was like, they don't really do that in Star Wars. Which is funny because like after playing Survivor and you have the droid and you can play all the different music and universe. I was thinking about that in my mind. I'm like, I wonder how this guy kind of fits into that. <laughs> right. So uh, One she was. Uh, so she yeah uh, she gets on her speed bike and she's running away from it. She doesn't want anything to do with it. Um. And then she is being, which I did not recognize. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not recognize the ship. She is being chased by the E-wing. by E wings, which I did not recognize them at first because we've never seen them in real life. You yeah, no, because this is this is their Legends vehicles. This is the first yes, time yeah. seeing them in canon, and they are the successor ship to the X wing. <coughs> they look <Hello>. amazing. <coughs> Yes, and so why are we introduced to Sabine? It's because Sabine, which I thought was a little bit of a stretch, but I'm here for it, because she has an artist's eye. She would make a great person to figure out this ancient puzzle. It's a little bit of a reach, but it's fine. I'm here for it. Uh, and so Ahsoka hunts her down. Uh, they clearly have some kind of history, and that's when we find out the first parts of that she was at, apparently Ahsoka's paddle. Training. Water. She was training with Ahsoka. I, I do know. appreciate some a line that is mentioned by Hu Yang later on. I really appreciate them doing that line, which you'll which we'll talk about later. Um, um so which I find I'm interesting because I don't think anybody who knew those two characters <laughs> would think that was gonna be an easy master Padawan. No, connection. both very stubborn characters yes. and very yes. uh <laughs> <laughs> right minded, which is even go to say Harry even mentions it. Yeah, you're both fucking stubborn. Uh, not surprising you guys didn't work out. Um, but um, uh, yeah, so she tells her, Hey, you stay right here, the ball stays here. I mean, that was about the corniest foreshadowing ever. Uh, so you don't take my star map ball anywhere. We don't know the star map yet, but you don't take that star ball thing, map ball. Anywhere, I'm gonna go in the other room and close the door yeah. and talk to somebody. You stay here, and don't leave with my golden ball. I'm again, oh. you go back there and close the door. You didn't mention one. Oh, yeah, could you keep going though? No, I mentioned the thing we skipped over. Okay, so uh, well, you can talk about it now. What did I skip over? Well, Sabine going, so Sabine's living in that tower that Ezra lived in. Is that for sure Ezra's old tower? That's, it, that's Ezra's tower. Yep, okay, that's the same one. Sure. The abandoned one, I uh, didn't mention you mentioned it. 
Well, it's fun is, yeah, that it's that she's living in there, has a loth cat, which is so, it was really cool to see. It looked really good, the animatronic of it. It was, uh, it's like uh, Grogu style, right? So yeah, it's animatronic, Grogu like Grogu, Grogu yeah. With some, CGI? It's CGI for certain things. Yeah, I thought it looked fantastic. That's mm-hmm. going to sell. That's a toy that's going to sell to kids. So the, um, um, what's it called? Well, my pocketbook's already burning up for this this damn show. There's going to be so many black series so, for this. What's well, I actually still get it. Maybe now you have the scene where so Sabine pulls out all this stuff. And I kept loving the constant she constantly crouched down and the helmet's there, it's foreshadowing the helmet, and yeah. she keeps ignoring it. But um, the you see Ezra, so you get to see Ezra in the hologram. And I think from at least from seeing him there, he looks really good as Ezra and sounds sounds great. The actor they got. Yeah, he looks fine, but my Ezra's forever a child, so but I this is the, the show he grew up too. But I didn't like it when he grew up. This is the older version, right? This is the yeah, one yeah. that I didn't like when he grew up in the show. Either. I'm gonna be honest. When he cut his hair and was all grown up, I don't like it. But uh, it is what it is. But I liked him like young and with his long hair. But yeah. it was funny when they first showed the actor off, like the announcement. He had long hair, the actor, and the long hair he had was the younger Ezra's hair, <laughs> which yeah. is really it's funny. Better, it's the better stuff. But I thought that was really cool. But again, do you know why that's important if you've never seen Rebels? Yeah. You know, but that's what they're setting it up. That's it. Um, because it's weird because they're like, oh, we're kind of family, but not really. Anyway, have a great day. Also, the I, I do find it funny. So, what your thought? I want your thoughts on this, where you mentioned like, oh, you're like a sister to me. Yeah. And, okay. and I look at her and I'm like, is that how she feels? Or is she feel- she's still you know, but I mean he kind of like he did kind of scratch his head and was like a little bit unsure about that wording. So like I <laughs> I feel like he he was uh he was doing that yeah so anyway so she goes to start trying to figure out how to unlock this ball yep. it took her an hour uh, and or so then we <laughs> learn about Balin though <clears throat> we learn about the lightsabers oh, sure. Yang tells us that the uh the apprentice obviously they made the lightsaber but it was still with Balin's help but Balin's lightsaber is the only one in the 500 years that he saw that Hu Yang saw anyone make like that like that design and it was a Padawan on the Jedi Temple, and he went on to disappear at the end of the Clone Wars, which is very I, interesting. I have that interesting. So, and I have a theory. All right, why you why 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 he the, the droid said that right? So does that that leads me to believe that the vast majority of lightsabers are basically made the same? Well, people probably like like you can only get so unique with them probably before it looks a little like much. you know when you're when you're making your lightsaber in the Jedi Survivor game and you're putting all these new components, different ones, and it looks terrible because it looks so fucking weird. So you just make it pretty uniform. I'm sure a lot of people at the temple are like I like Mace Windu's lightsaber. I like Obi Wan's, and, <laughs> and they just make it look like theirs, right? Just change the color a little. They so like their cards, yeah, I, basically. I like card forty two. I want it to look just like that. So uh, I'm sure. Balon's the interesting the most. Um, but I have a theory. I have a quick theory regarding him and Shin. I think what happened probably was he was on some his missions or whatever. He found Shin when she was like probably a little kid uh, during the end of the Clone Wars or whatever, and he got her and he went off to ex. He re- he went off with her, uh, and that's how he has her. He basically, he basically treated her like a daughter, essentially. That's or, is it, or is it his daughter? Hmm, that's a good idea too. Because it might be why he kind of sneaked out and didn't come back. Because he might have. Hmm. That's a good idea too. Almost like how what's his name? Like Voss had his kid secretly as well. Colonel Seven Hundred Seven just subscribed for thirteen months in a row. Whoa. Thank you, sir. Hopefully, we're gonna start playing some games here pretty soon. Now that he found out that I have a computer that works. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. So uh, that that's my. I don't think it's his daughter, but I think it it would explain. It's an interesting why he, idea, but I think it's if he old. found the kid at that just basically like orphan child or something. Uh, but she keeps messing with it until she um, gets it to work, and that was when I lit out a little because <laughs> it looked just like a star map, and even more so later on on episode two, it's even more so clearly a star map. Um, and then of course, with all the foreshadowing of don't take it, don't lose it. You knew something was gonna happen, and she the 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 cat goes, and then here come all the uh, HKs all the and, and the uh, droids and everything. So, yeah, um, I and then the yeah, interesting though, she grabbed a Jedi weapon instead of Mandalorian weapons. I was not initially going for it. First yeah. thing she grabbed would be the Jedi weapon. Mm-hmm. 
As long as you're still attached to that mindset of training, right? Here's what I loved about it. She went downstairs, chased the joy downstairs. Uh, our little Padawan friend, the new one, the, the bad guy, is waiting there for her. By the way, she is freaking amazing. Like I also love, I, if you mentioned the braid thing, I love how she looks like the very pale or with the ha- like the bobbed hair like that with the braid just coming underneath yeah. through it. Such a cool look. Is that character that actress is playing that character as if she could be a Jedi. Like she could be a normal, respectful Jedi. Or it looks like she could also at any moment lose her freaking mind and murder 300 people. Like you she, Darth character. Maul look, yeah. Oh, this this actress does such a good job with this character, to be honest with you. So she ignites her lightsaber and it's green. And it looks so old fashioned when she lights that orange one up and she's like standing there, like staring at her. And she does her very obviously, and I was so happy they did it. She does a lightsaber stance as if this is the first time she's holding this lightsaber, and then runs at her, and she le- like lets her run at her and just stares at her funny, like, what are you going to do with that thing? Like, she knew right away. Yeah. She's, she's well, not training enough. Well, she knew right away that she might have some training, but it ain't. she ain't ready to go yet. She ain't I, ready for the big, big well, days. Uh, the initial strike, I like she She, she blocks it. Being hits a second, and she goes for a second time, and then she goes like this really quickly just to, to stare her. And then Sabine just backs off like, "Oh fuck!" And then because <laughs> it seemed like pretty obvious to me, she was she was she was a cat playing with a toy. Like she was not yes. going just yeah. basically messing with her. Apparently, and- I didn't double check this, but apparently the closed captioning for this episode or that fight it's mentioned that like she basically is like. Completely unmatched uh, against Shin, and that Shin's yeah. basically completely uh, like toying with her and devastating her. It's going, Colonel. It's it's good. It's good. Colonel. It's good. Um, but then we have the problem. Here comes my one complaint that I said I'd have a couple. Okay, and it's gonna keep happening. Star Wars has a lightsaber problem. They need to fix this lightsaber problem. It's a bad problem. In one scene, they can hold a lightsaber up and a freaking ship goes by and they cut it in half. And another scene, even in the video games, you can cut a robot in half or a droid in half with one swing. The next time uh, you could fight a hairy beast and it takes 45 swings. I get it's a video game. But this carries out through the TV shows too. Is this a all-cutting plasma device that can melt a door in one second? Can take stone and Ahsoka puts it in the ground, does one little spin and it cuts open a perfect sp- stone and metal or stone. And you can stab somebody in the gut and they die. However, except for when the plot needs it to be. And then suddenly they don't die. Cause she takes the old famous stab to the stomach and she swings a couple more times, falls to the ground. We knew there was no way she was dying. Cause we already know now that's not a death shot, I guess. I guess maybe they train them now to, to miss all the vital organs when necessary. They can bend the lightsaber. Well, um, it's so funny. When that stab happened, I was like, oh my God, already pretty more stabbings. I think the trick is they need to learn. You, you If you stab, someone's not going to work. You have to slash them. You have to slash to kill. You don't stab. Stabbing is just maiming. <laughs> or you gotta, um, like, maybe, maybe what Darth Maul did is he stabbed it. And then he did the little like you know yeah, he, <laughs> he did a little thing inside scrambled it, scrambled his here. eggs and then yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> he scrambled it up a little bit inside. That's funny. That was definitely a weird yeah. Like obviously I know um so Darth Maul well. didn't die. You thought he died. He didn't die. Darth Maul didn't die from that. You cut him in half. He still lives, but he's also well. We'll go. That's another topic for another conversation. But he's he's magically assisted as well. So that's. But Maul did way. die from being stabbed, though. Don't forget. Obi Wan did kill him with the stab. <laughs> Obi Wan leaned in, like, "I'm not taking you back to tank for this. I'm sorry." <laughs> yes. um, and, uh, so she falls on the ground, a uh, hole smoldering uh, in her stomach, and we fade to black. And that was mm-hmm. episode one, pretty much. Correct. Yep. And then um, carried on episode. Oh, in the end, did you set to the end credits? Just seeing the star map thing go. I, I did. Yeah, I, I love the music again. The music's so good. Oh, okay. I just had to listen. Scene to I missed. I was like, I don't remember there being a scene. Yeah, it was just the uh, how the how the end credits are going, like the map and everything and the fonts, which is really cool. Uh, yeah. So that is episode one. Yeah, we talked for almost yeah. just as much as the episode was. Um, yeah. and then episode well, two overall too. So we, we'll be able to go faster on the second one, I'm sure. Yeah, second one was definitely. Uh, I have to rewatch the second one again. I really like the second one too. I do. Um. Yeah, we basically, you know, Sabine recovers from what happens. Uh, we 
Uh, Osoka's pissed off. Hera's just trying to calm the situation down. And then um, what we get is Hu Yang saying to her that, um, oh, well, you know, you're definitely the worst. Like, you're the worst Yunling or Padawan or apprentice I have known uh, in 500 years. Yeah, he, he's I, the force. He says that you don't have a force apt- uh, adaptitude, uh, which makes idiot. you the worst person. Yeah, ever. Idiot, by far. Like you would. Which I am so idiot. happy he said that line because that's the issue. Because if they're going to string it off like she has the force, like fully force the Jedi wise, that becomes an issue. But um, him, him just saying, "Yeah, no, you're bad. You can't yeah. use the force. You uh, you <laughs> you would far be the worst one ever. You're the worst one." And she's like, "Well, thanks for that." Thank you for that. Um, that was really nice of you, uh, my so friend. But we, we do get a porn uh, scene. Ahsoka uh, goes back and looks like she's, we find out later, she's kind of pretending to be looking through her apartment, basically. And Assassin Droid jumps down. She cuts off his head in one second and was, makes the comment, yeah, I was hoping that you would do that. Um, and she takes his head back to, she grabs his head, takes it back mm-hmm. to Sabine, and Sabine Apparently has yeah. the ability to do anything, not just an yeah, artist, sorry. but also electrical engineer. And she uh, wires his head to figure out where he came from. And I don't actually remember what the name of the planet was. Maybe he remembers. But they find out that they're going that he came from a planet that's obviously from the New Republic. And so they decide to head to this planet to figure out why that droid came from there, because he shouldn't be. He's an assassin droid, and that is just a Republic uh, planet. So, if anybody's watching right now, did you guys actually watch the show? Because I feel bad. (laughs) Um, Anyways, so they go on this planet, which I don't remember the name of it, because my guest star, who did not know that we were doing this tonight and hasn't been told for weeks that we're doing this tonight. Uh, anyways, he uh, they go there and find out that it's like a scrapyard, basically, um, where this where this, the, the droid comes from. And, Sorry about that. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Corellia. Yeah, I, I know I sprung this show on you. Uh, you, you know, I know you did. It was uh, it was not planned to show at all. You know, <laughs> it was the Cor- Corellia. That's the planet that um, uh, Han Solo's from, and we saw Han Solo. Um, and the second time that I would say they're trying to show that mm-hmm. um, the Empire, I mean, the New Republic, is kind of out to lunch with this stuff. I. I mean, I really did like that uh, when they're riding that little speeder thing through the place and they're talking like, oh, how much like how much people here are still from the Empire? And he's like, most of them. And they're like, what do you mean? How's that possible? Wouldn't they should be, you know, gone? He's like, it is care about money, man. And like he said that, like, we if you were to get rid of all these people, there is no way possible you would. It, you, there's no way you would be able to possibly keep any of these operations running that. Yeah. The clean slate. You need all these people all the way from the base level janitors all the way to the government, which is like makes so much sense. And and I like the Hera and like the Soka look at each other for a second, going, "That's going to be a problem." But it's kind of like we got to live with it for now. And obviously, and it, you know that actually harkens back. You know, put on history. My, no, like, yeah, perfect. my 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 nineteen history degrees here that I don't use for anything. Um, obviously that happens in every war. You do that. Uh more, you know, famously in World War II, obviously. Yeah, with the yeah, NASA the, as well. The German scientists that were the most useful. Suddenly we pretend like they didn't have war crimes and they were uh they were brought to all over the place. Um so you gotta use them when you can. But obviously we're you know, as soon as we land there, we're gonna find out some shenanigans. I actually was not expecting that everybody on that planet apparently was a part of the Empire. <laughs> Which is really funny. Until uh, General Hera is like, you know, the guy's like, well, oh. where, where did this come from? Where does that come from? The guy's like, it's classified. Well, I'll unclassify it. Well, I, can't I love this. that scene so much. Like, it's classified. And she's like, and she smiles. She's like, okay, I need clearance. I'm giving you clearance. I'm a general. <laughs> nothing's nothing's not clear to me. And, and then the guys at the tables are like, uh, uh-oh. <laughs> They're like, so as he's staring, trying to figure out, he calls that droid over, 
And then so funny. Could probably ask, what kind of droids do you have here? And he names off a bunch of like carrying droids and in, in, uh, how about droids. HK units? Assassin yeah. droid? We don't need them here. Yes, there was an assassin droid happened. here. We got a rat in the group. The freaking droids like, hey, I've seen droids like that. Matter of fact, one just like five days ago told me to get my hands off something. I wasn't allowed to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so good. The droid just gave him away. And then Hera sees that's awfully a big engine for something that you're supposed to be making for the New Republic. We're not building anything that big. And then I ever, all the humans who obviously been looking around very suspiciously. Suspiciously. Scream out for the Empire, and well, they don't make it very far. They get dispatched pretty fast, yeah. and that's when we find out that obviously everyone working there is working for the Empire and not for the New Republic. Yeah, again, highest bidder, right? Or just like double taking. I do like the fact that they're like, oh, Super Star Destroyer engines, and I looked it up because the friend asked me how many were there, and I'm like, I was trying to remember in how much quantities in canon. In Legends, I think it's about the same. I've noticed in canon. Uh, there were how many do you think? How many super star destroyers do you think there were? I mean, that's gonna sound silly. I, I would, I don't know, 50, 100. I don't, I don't know how many there actually were. That's be a lot though. Okay, so Vader's was the first one, right? He was the first one that they made and he gave it to him. There were 13. That's it. That's it? 13? Think about how massive they are compared to star destroyers. There were only 13. Vader had one. Another one was destroyed during oh, some battle. I'm thinking about all of them. Okay, I wasn't thinking about yeah. Okay. The superstar destroyers, yeah. And then, um, yeah. and then the rebels took over one, and then they decommissioned it and for parts as well. And I'm like, why would you do that? Um, um but yeah. So they only made 13 of those. So like, like them having those giant engine parts for that ship is very, you know, very expensive, as they say. Because that goes back to. Uh, which is really cool how Star Wars kind of does that and it makes it it makes you go from being like a casual fan to a super dork like we are. Cause that goes back to there were th- two train of thoughts, right? Build a, a super, you know, a, a super moon base. Uh they can blow up planets or produce fleets of these ships. Fleets of these destroyers, because I we could take out a planet with these two. And that was a two train yeah. thoughts, obviously need, one one out, then the other one. Now the Thrawn's thoughts were right. Why do we yeah. have this giant machine when we could have even more TIE fighters and Star Destroyers that could just overwhelm people opposed to having a giant ball. And then it showed that you're going to set out in the atmosphere and blow up a planet just easy with those things, bombard it for a few hours. Yeah, and, just keep, yeah. And, I mean, really. the level of the planet. You don't need to blow it up. Um, yeah, and then this is going to go into my favorite scene. The whole thing is my favorite. Actually, I thought this was the best part of both shows. Uh, for nostalgia's sake, and I just thought it was cool. So uh, they see that there's a ship taking off the one of the big engines that nobody needs. So they go chasing it down with the Phantom Two, baby. Yeah, Hera goes in her ship, and Ahsoka goes on the ground and starts chasing other the Inquisitor. things. Inquisitor. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool because there's an Inquisitor there. I'm really, I'm really curious to what that's all about. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I like the Hera one because we get to see one of the greatest characters, one of the most controversial because he's basically a damn war criminal. Uh, well, <laughs> he brings up the fact too. Uh, <laughs> Chopper. Chopper. Chopper, baby. And, and it uh, is perfectly done. I, you can't do Chopper better than they did on this particular part. Yeah, sitting in the ship, just, uh, talking exactly as it talking is. trash. Doing all the things that Chopper does, M- mouthing, questioning why the Widows don't do is kill everything in sight instead of. Um, and it's it, so it funny. Amazing. That funniest thing ever. Yeah, it's like, why, why are we putting Tracker on this, basically? And it's like, oh, we can't shoot out of the sky, Chopper. We'll, we'll, we'll crash and plan and kill like hundreds of people. And it's like, okay, sure. <laughs> why is that an issue? <laughs> then, uh, there are Imperials uh, anyway, apparently. Why, why does it matter? And then looking for the little parts, just. Throwing his little hands out, angry, trying to find these things. I didn't touch your stuff, Chopper. Don't buy. No, I didn't touch your shit. I didn't move it. People are getting into his stuff. He has that funny cartoon thing, and they added it where the top of his head, his head lifts up and moves. And lifts I and love talks, it. Talks, talks, they even added that in there. That was great. I I didn't I uh, loved it. I didn't add it into the news. Just was a thing. The toy they made a toy recently for. I showed you. I showed it before for Chopper. It was an animatronic one that can move around, do different things. And apparently won best toy award for 2023 or something, oh, you know. um, which makes sense because he's the chop. Um, and then we find out that she's basically baiting the ship because she wants to get a tracker put on the ship. She doesn't want to destroy it. She wants to figure out where it's going. Obviously, Hera yeah. works in that way. She's really smart. She's really yeah, she's she's like the that. general for a reason. Yeah, uh, yeah, she is the general for a reason. 
And so Chopper, the last second, of course, because he's talking more trash than he actually is trying to help. He 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 lands and she misses. She also tells him, "Don't miss this time," because Chopper does kind of screw things up sometimes. <laughs> uh, and he lands it, and they and they let it go. While that's happening, Ahsoka's down there chasing what it seems to be an Inquisitor. Like, yeah, no. we we have seen it, and I didn't know where they were going with this. I don't know if it was gonna be Knights of Ren, or if it was gonna be something because it has that kind of look. But then he lights up the uh, lightsaber, and we find out that's definitely in the style of a of an Inquisitor. And what's interesting is you do you can compare it directly. His he does have a straight up red lightsaber blade, and you look at Balin and. Uh, and Shin, and it's obvious it's not the same color. It is an orange lightsaber compared. And so they fight. He uh, he gets away. He's making a run for it. He's gonna jump on the ship. He throws a lightsaber at, at her after he lights it up like the hell. Oh, that out. was my favorite. What in a second? You can't tell that's not the most badass move in the world. Where she's standing there staring at him. He calls it back, and then she just slightly leans her shoulder out of the way. Just kind of knows that, that was thing. awesome. As it goes right past her. That was such a badass scene. That, that and you know that Inquisitor was thinking in his mind, "Oh shit, okay." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, he said that that was just sweating. He was visibly sweating inside his helmet. Just uh, uh. <laughs> that was a badass scene. Like you could have made that scene come off corny, but they made it come off really cool. That she just kind of ducked her shoulder as it came by her and went up in there, and she's just giving everyone the death look as they're yeah. going by. Um. And so they know where it's going now. They they were able to track it. Uh, and, and they I find really remember, it's a giant hyperspace ring. Which it is, is, which they have, what was it, like nine of those it's big... It's massive, because like, you, you look at a hyperspace ring, you see them for, like, that's what Obi-Wan's ship, those yeah. Jedi mm-hmm. starfighters use and, and, and to get around. Uh, and this is a massive one, presumably because it goes into the... Um, it's going to take it to the next galaxy. Which oh we forgot to mention when um they obtained the uh the orb the 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 uh star map what the villains did with it what when they got when they got the the star map and they put it in that pedestal with the night sister yeah. magic yeah that's that's what she does right here though isn't it that's when she no that was early in the episode I forgot. oh it was oh wow oh my gosh yeah I'm we sorry. forgot about that mention because we were yeah, talking she about she used uh, her green flame it was a green flame which is really cool they didn't overdo it just a little green flame. Oh, and that's geez. definitely when it was 100% confirmed. That's star map. I don't give a crap what they're trying to say now. And then when they open, yeah, when they open up, and she's explaining how, oh, this, you, like my people, there's like some connection there and some interest with the, the with that end of the universe. And there's people, the people from there moving between the places. And then, uh, um, what's his name? Balin says, oh, that's Pergola or something. Yeah, he does. Stories of the uh, the children tell uh, tales in the um, pathway to per 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 dia per dia per dia. That's what it's per dia. dia. I like per diem for this per dia. Uh, They ask her because they're on the what is this? Is it Satos? Yeah, they're on this like moon planet. Um, and they're asking her like, "What where are we at? Like, what is this doing?" And she was like, "This is done by an ancient people a long time ago." And like that's probably when you were doing it. That's when I definitely leaned in. I leaned in. I was like, "Say, say it, save her cotton. Just use the word. I know I you want to follow me." This this thing we keep saying the Rakatan Empire. They once they were a force sensitive species who basically conquered everything in the world. They conquered every in the universe. They conquered everything yeah. on the time. outskirts of the galaxy. And is there? Is there? They invented I, hyperdrive. Supposedly, yeah, hyperspace travel. Yeah. And well, they didn't invent it. They they basically stole it from the people who were nice enough to show them how it works, and then they enslaved yeah. the people who showed them Are how it works. That way? Or do you think they're going to say they they found out how to do it from the the space whales? <sighs> they're probably going to say the space whales showed them, and then they yeah. they they put them in uh, Sea Land and uh, Sea World, and they <laughs> <laughs> they forced them to show them the way. <laughs> they're not good people. The ricotta. Um, so here's this her line she said at one time. Thrawn speaks to me from time in distance or whatever. And Very world between worlds, isn't it? World between worlds. Uh, you, again, you have the no rebels. That's a deep cut. That was one of the stranger parts of it. Well, rebels. that messed someone up. That just shows up right here out of nowhere. Um, supposedly, he has been said that that will never come back up again. That was a one-time deal. They destroyed it. It will never be mentioned again. They don't want to have time travel. They don't want to have easy outs. They don't want to have lazy writing. Um, but this sounds like in the world's the damn 
thing that she was showing looks like the end of the world thing. Those, uh, yeah, it looks like the portal world. entry. It yeah. looks like it. Uh, so, um, I, I don't know. And it was called that thing was called the Eye of Scion, by the way. Eye of Scion, great name. Um, not sure what it means, but great name. Uh, and, and then, then I, think that, I think that goes like this. So at, at that point, we're seeing. Oh, and uh, then sorry, the other the other part of interest was that. When that lady left, Morgan left, it was just Balin and, and Shin. And Shin's like, so what's what happens when we get Thrawn? Like, what happens when we meet him and all yeah. that? What's the goal? And then Balin's like, oh, power. Power that you cannot imagine. That's what we're going for here. So, so yeah, oh, not now alone myself. He was gone earlier. Well, I was gone earlier. Now he's gone. I can say all the bad, ta- all the hot takes I like. Well, he's gone, such as Max Rebo is the best Star Wars kid. Oh, hey, how are you doing? I hit oh. the. <laughs> my, I have like a back button on my mouse, and I just hit it, fat fingered it, and hit that, hit that thing. That was fun. Um, I will say that I, I think about this time we start seeing, we see a pretty cool scene. It's, it's Sabine. She has long hair. She never had long hair in the Rebels. Uh, no. she pulls out Let her helmet. Go, she is a Mandalorian. She pulls out her helmet. She takes a knife and she cuts her hair off. Same way that Kanan does. Yeah. Uh, puts all of her armor out, which I had a little geek moment because I like seeing all of her armor. I also uh, like how up. it laid out like that. How she lays it out in pieces. And then she gets in, and then we see her next to Ahsoka, and Ahsoka says, "Well, take us out, then, Padawan." And then they. Have their little smile. Oh no, them. you missed the part where they, she goes to this to the wall and they just recreate the scene from Rebels, the ending oh, of Rebels. Yeah, one hundred percent. Uh, yeah, that was weird. I think that's weird to me is they recreate that so well. Like the part with Sabine walking, everything is oh, perfect. Shot, shot, same scene. But then they go to Ahsoka, and it's so weird because like it's so she's so in that scene specifically in Rebels, mm-hmm. she's so unique because she's in a giant white cloak which you never see. And she has a staff, Gandalf. And then here she's just in the how how she's been dressing the whole the whole time since Mandalorian. I, I, I'm I'm glad you said Gandalf because to me that's exactly what what this is. It is Gandalf. He said it before. I've seen interviews where he said he's like obsessed with uh, with the Gandalf story, and I'm assuming that's why because in his original idea, she came back as Gandalf the White, and in this one she was in gray the entire time. And I'm assuming knowing how much he loves Lord of the Rings, that she's still Gandalf the Gray because she hasn't fulfilled her full potential yet so i'm assuming that's why he changed her from white to gray and didn't give her a staff didn't give her the equivalent of a long beard she didn't have the long you know she saw the short ones i'm assuming that's what that was representing when they redid that shot for shot thing maybe because it's weird that she it's weird that how that specifically is different completely what well, yeah. everything else is identical um, I think I'm trying to see. I think the, the, that's it. Other than that's how, it ends. that's how it ends. Yep. Other than when they go back and they have a final little conversation between the uh, the two. Oh, the Balin mentions I said earlier where he's like, "Oh, I, I killing Ahsoka is sad because there's not many of us left." I think I mentioned yeah. that already. Yeah. My favorite. That's probably one of my favorite lines from that uh, episode. I'm trying to see. I don't really see any uh, on my notes. I don't really see anything. That's. I think that's pretty much it. I think that's it. Uh yeah, so overall, I mean, I mean it's good. Like I don't know what to say for being a first couple episodes where there was action, but it wasn't like oh, over the top. Because I know people have been whining that there's not enough space battles and things going on. This was a lot of talking, and for them having to introduce a new series, and also trying to make it work and introduce all these all these cartoon characters into live action and. Who have rich lawn backstories that to new viewers they'll be lost, right? Like yeah. Sabine and Hera. They're doing a good job, obviously. Job. Uh, so here, Sabine's the standout. I think Sabine's the standout of the of the returning characters, uh, and the new characters, obviously the here, master and apprentice. Here, here's what you you you, you spoiled earlier because I said I wasn't going to talk about it, and you. Damn good, well I said I was going to talk about it, and you put it out there anyway. Um, at the, the same thought. When I was sitting there thinking about, and I'm writing down the notes that I want to talk about on this show, um, I was going through all the different characters, and it it kind of came to me at this point. Um, I can't think of a bad character. They're amazing. Uh, like I was telling you, the very selfish Star Wars nerd in me is absolutely gutted that we lost uh, the actor that plays him. Uh, Ray, he Steven, is, Ray Stevenson. Denied. 
um, because he's absolutely freaking amazing. And I would have loved to see him <coughs> carry on for 20 years playing this character because he does such a great job. Um, honestly, the character that I am not connecting with the most is Ahsoka. I, I don't think... And that's my um, favorite character. This is one of the reasons I wanted to watch it because Ahsoka is one of funny. my funny. Yeah, in my favorite. my opinion too. I think even though I do think she does a good job, and I'm I'm excited to see more of her in the show. I do think she's the weakest character in there, uh, and that's not again not the lack of her. It's it's the fact that everyone else in this uh, show we see now is putting like their hundred and ten percent. Yeah. Well, she's like putting like ninety. Like she's there, but she's not like. There's something about her Ahsoka here that does feel weird. And I do think it's again, it seems, seems a little dis disassociated. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Not as bit. not as friendly, but I guess. But it's funny because you look at her. I, I I think about this. You look at how she was in when she was with Luke in season two of Mandalorian. She seemed more happy and lively there, which seemed a little more yeah. like Ahsoka. But here it's just like she's dejected. Um, and what I'm hoping for, what I'm, I'm assuming, cause obviously she's a great actress. So what I'm assuming is, is that's on purpose. I'm assuming that she's going to be like, I she's emotionally too. moved away from all this and she's not the funny, you know, snips or whatever. She's not the funny little thing that she used to be cause she's seen too much. And that through the, through this character, we're gonna have a character arc, we're gonna have a character build and through this, she'll, she'll find out who she is and that maybe she won't be so. I don't want to say mopey because it's just seriousness, I guess. Like she has a melancholy, yeah, very melancholy she has a seriousness about her, and I'm especially because she had she has had like she's like like uh, Sabine mentions like oh where do you call home? She's like the ship the ship suits me fine, not like oh the ship is my home. Like this does me fine, and like you know that when Sabine's gonna be with her again, bring some life back into her life, and then presumably others popping in there too, right? Yeah, I. I the standouts to me obviously is the Jedi and his Padawan, not Jedi and his Padawan, but Jedi and Padawan. Dark Jedi, yeah, they are Rangers. absolutely amazing. Uh, and then yeah, Ren, who I was the most nervous about when we talked about it. I said they're going to screw her up. Perfect the actress plays her perfectly. Yeah, uh, she looks perfect. She, I mean, it's it's freaking amazing. I cannot believe how much they got this quirky because it's a weird cartoon. Rebels is a weird cartoon. The art is weird. The writing's kind of out there. It was really nice seeing all of her different art, though, when she's like drawing on the walls yeah. and her helmet. But yeah. it's weird, though, right? Because she draws those little cats that looks like my cow did it. But she's also the one who do the damn mural. That's like the most lifelike mural ever. And she also drew that, too. So it's weird that she has this like doodles that she puts all over her helmet. It's, also, her you know, it's, it's a funny, uh, there's a funny thought I was explaining earlier to the wife as well, where I'm like, Cause she asked, she's like, "Oh wait, why is the?" She's like, "So the empire is gone." I'm like, "Yeah." And she's like, "So why is the? Why are they still using the rebellion?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" She's like, "The logo." And I'm like, "Oh well, the, the New Republic logo is the rebellion symbol, the phoenix, surrounded by the ring and the different stars for the New Republic Senate." And then I'm like laughing because I'm thinking about it as I'm watching the episodes again. And I'm like, on both Hera and Sabine's jacket, they had the Phoenix Squadron logo, right? Yeah. And I I remember that, oh yeah, Sabine's the one who designed the logo for Phoenix Squadron, which is the logo that was used for the entire rebellion. Like Sabine's just walking around there. We're looking at Sabine, like the whole time she's like, Yeah, she's the one who designed the logo for this entire thing. She's, she's that the New Republic logo is technically an abri- as a uh, a successor image to her. She has the copyright. She owns the copyright to that logo. If you ever heard this story, she's that poor lady who made the Nike swoosh for Nike, just walking around with like the biggest logo <laughs> ever. She got like twenty bucks for it, and a and a basically, kind of a Mac. <laughs> she, she could make on residuals for all the ships that have that plastered on top of it. <laughs> so, my excitement level, we'll say, was at like a six because my worried going to throw up because they're going to ruin this. Well, whole thing. from all the other shows keeping us down, was like an eight. And I'm not going to go to to our dearly beloved former third member, which he'll be back soon, I assume. Um, I'm not going to go. I can't, be I can't be disappointed ever. Never. Um, but my excitement level is a very unhealthy, like 8.59. And it's not a good place to be because it is Star Wars at the end of the day. And they could run this bitch right off the rails in a second. <laughs> 
So it's not a good place to well, be, but I'm I'm excited for. This I'm at show. a solid seven excitement level. I would say closer to eight for sure. But also, I I was thinking about this yesterday. I'm like, hmm. Every first episode of all the shows, even Bugga Boba Fett or Obi Wan, were good. But after Obi-Wan that, they was, just started going like this. I don't know if Obi Wan was good. Obi Wan was the like, first episode. The first episode. Okay. But I was nervous already. Like I was already nervous because he. Wasn't, I know what you mean, but it was like it wasn't like okay, this is this is gonna be bad. It, wasn't it, was, it was like oh cool, it, like, it looked great and everything. But the, you know what I mean, like like after the, after the initial hump, it's like oh, so I'm said, hoping that it's a dangerous level to excited and, level to be. And again, the whole thing hinges off of it, and I'm I swear to God, I will I will kill myself you will if not they do this. Yourself. Do not say this on freaking Twitch or YouTube. I will oof myself on, on Twitch. I will oof myself. If the first episode was 50 something minutes, it was just about an hour. The second was 45 minutes. Perfect. If these episodes keep getting shorter and they come to the point where oh, they're okay. like 20 minutes, I'm going yeah. to lose my mind. They're going to be shorter. You know that. They better not be 20 minutes because I do need to be full hours. I need chopper war crimes. That's what I need in my life right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. I think that's it. If you want to, you can watch it now. If you're watching today, you haven't got to watch it. You can watch it um, right now. Uh, and then try to watch it. If you can, we're going to be doing this on Thursday, even though I guess we could technically do it on Wednesday, but I think we're just going to keep it on Thursday. Uh, give people like an extra day to watch it. And then you can watch it <clears throat> on Tuesday or Wednesday. And then you can join in the discussion and tell us how we're wrong. Cause there's no way we're going to keep this love affair going. There's going to be me freaking out about something stupid pretty quick. I would imagine. Probably. Um, but you can always um, watch it here. And then mm-hmm. later on, it will be downloaded to YouTube. If you do miss it, you can always watch the edited version, which I'm going to cut out what he said he's going to do to himself because I'm not going to get a copyright <laughs> strike. I mean, I copyright strike, but a, a community guideline strike for what you just said. Um, but anyway, okay, I talk about myself, not others. 